Don't stay awake for too long Don't go to bed I'll make a cup of coffee for your head I'll get you up and going out of bed And I... Hey, it's Nate from Echo City Music Lab. This is going to be a quick video today. Someone sent me a message asking if I could do a tutorial for Deathbed by Paufu featuring Biba Doobie. It's just four chords repeated over and over again throughout the song. I'm going to show you a great way to do those chords on piano and also clear up a misconception about this chord progression. Also, since the song makes use of a couple different kinds of seven chords, uh, after I show you how to do the chord progression, I'll do a little tutorial on seven chords. The song is quick to learn, so there will be time if you're interested. All right. <laughs> The chord progression goes like this. C major for two measures, then C major seven for two measures, then F major seven for two measures, and then F dominant seven, or just F seven for two measures. I was poking around and I noticed that if you Google the chord chart for this song or uh, look at some of the other YouTube tutorials on it that exist, um, instead of that F uh, dominant seven or F seven at the end of the progression, they put uh, F minor. Um, that's wrong. Listening to the recording, it's definitely an F7. Um, no hate, though. Uh, the F minor does kind of a similar thing. And uh, if for your version of it, you want to use the F minor because you like how it sounds, that's cool. I'm going to show you a way that sounds uh, the closest to the recording. Also, I'm just going to straight up show you what I think is the best way to, to voice these chords. Then maybe after uh, we can talk about how I arrived at those voicings. So for the C major, that's an easy one. It's often the first chord anybody learns on piano. It's uh, C, E, and G. And uh, I'm also going to just play a bass note in my left hand, probably uh, with my pinky, just on C um, for when I do that chord. Okay, next chord is the C major seven. For that one, I am going to do everything the same as the C major, but I'm gonna just take my thumb and drop it down to a B. So that's gonna be uh, B, E, and G in the right hand. Still a, a C bass note, because it's a C major seven. For the third chord, it's changing to an F major seven. Uh, that, so the bass note's gonna change. I'll use my second finger to do an F in the left hand. And then the right hand's gonna do C, E, and A. And for the final chord, you're gonna keep everything in the same place, except you're gonna take that second finger and drop it down to an E flat. So you're gonna still be doing that F in the left hand and the right hand's gonna be C, E flat, A. So all together and counting the two measures for each chord, it'll sound like this. One, two, three, four. 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 Then it repeats. Now on the recording, the rhythm sounds like this. The thing is, that sounds great when you're strumming on guitar or ukulele, but if you try to reproduce that rhythm on piano, like... gets a little too busy sounding. I'm finding it sounds really nice to just do the first beat of every measure with your left hand bass note and then the chords in your right hand on beats two and four. So like this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And so on. So it ends up sounding like this. Don't stay awake for too long. Don't go to bed. I'll make a cup of coffee for your head I'll get you up and going out of bed And I... And then it just repeats and the rapping starts over the same chords. That's all you need to know to cover the song. You could um, play around with like maybe in some parts bringing the left hand bass notes down an octave to get a little bit more power out. Maybe 
the points in the song where the the beat's going and then you could bring it back up an octave where it strips back stuff like that you can play around with it and yeah let's just talk for a second about the seven chords and how i arrived at those particular voicings so i think i'll try to go more in depth on this at some point in a different video but just the basic anatomy of a chord so let's take the c major chord it's got a root a third and a fifth the root is the note that the chord's named after and then you can just count one two three that's the third three four five that's the fifth now it gets a little more complicated with major minor and where the black keys are sitting but that's the general idea and then you can extend that out if we're talking about seven chords so that's the fifth six seventh there's a seventh chord it happens to be a c major seven chord so here's what makes it a c major seven chord the foundational triad or chord is a major chord that's because this is a major third at the bottom which if you count one two three four that makes it a major third and then once you have that you do another major third one two three four so it's a major third here and a major third here and that gives you that c major seven chord sound it's kind of jazzy sounding a little bit co more colorful than just a regular major chord so the notes of a C major 7 chord are C, E, G, and B. Now you might have noticed that's not exactly how I played it in Deathbed. Um, so what I did was I took that B that's at the top of the chord and I brought it down here. And here's another thing. I just dropped that C. You know why? Because the left hand's doing a C bass note anyway. We don't need both C's. As long as we hear one C in the bass, it's going to sound like a C major 7 chord. So here's how I voice that C major 7 chord. I liked how it makes it really easy to get from that C major to the C7 by just moving one note. Also, um, if you're listening to the recording, it didn't sound like we had a high B in the voicing. It was more low. So that sounded accurate to the recording to me and easy to do. And the first F chord you do in this song was also a major seven chord. So we can look at a F major triad. And then if we count up a major third above the, the top note there, so one, two, three, four, we've got that. We've got F, A, C, and E. And I'll tell you the F dominant seven chord we did, which is right after the F major seven chord we're talking about, the only difference between those is that top note goes down a half step. So that's a minor third, one, two, three, above the top note of the F chord. So for the F dominant seven, we've got F, A, C, and E flat. Once again, though, that's not exactly how I voiced those chords. So let's take a look at the first one, the F major seven. Um, so once again, because I'm doing an F here, um, I don't necessarily need to play it in the right hand. So really, as long as we got the F in the left hand, all we need is A, C, and E. But we can take this C and E and move them down an octave, making A the top note. So it would look like that. Um, the main reason I did that is just because listening to the recording, I could tell it was voiced in such a way that the A was the highest note that sticks out. Whenever you voice different inversions, the, the, the highest note of the chord tends to kind of poke out and grab your ear. So once we have this particular voicing of an F major seven chord, if you want to make it the dominant seven chord, which happened to come next, you take that E, which was up top before, but it's here, and you just drop it down that half step. So easy switch between those two. So I hope that cleared things up a little bit. Those are the two common types of seven chords that are built off of a major triad. There's also, you know, building off of a minor triad, you have like a C minor seven. There's none of those in this song, but they're pretty common. I think I'll do another video just all about seven chords and I'll go over it all more thoroughly. Cool, I think that'll do it. So thank you to the person who sent me a message about this song. I hadn't heard it before and I'm really enjoying it. Keep the request coming and also please subscribe and turn on the notifications so you'll know every time I release a new video. See you soon.